is part 2 of our discussion under chapter 3 analysis of polyphase system so last discussion last last video we end up with delta y system and this will be the last topic under three wire three phase balance system so how do we do with delta y system so what i did here is i just converted the source into y using the concept of uh source conversion from the first part of this uh chapter and after converting that one the phase voltage at the source now will be the same voltage at the load side so if they are the same voltages then whatever the line current flowing to the source now will be the same line current as and the phase current at the load then i came up with this formula from that that the line current will be equal to the original voltage the phase voltage or the line voltage of the source multiplied by one angle negative 30 so this one angle negative 30 is we know that that the the line or the phase voltage or line current will always be uh lagging the phase respective phases with 30 degrees we showed that one in our picture diagram before so I came up with I these formulas, three formulas, and they are still out of phase by 120 degrees. Then we also discussed this uh, example, and I directly used the formula. So the problem does not say the does not indicate the the P sequence or your reference. Then you can assume your references. But in solving, you need to indicate what are your references, not just solve and solve and solve without indicating your reference then you may came up with a different answer so our next topic now and we will be discussing this this part two will be so we're done with the three wire system how about the four wire system so a four wire system is a three phase system also that has four terminals or four wires that's why it's called four wire so that Original three wire system, so three wire are Y and B. There's another line called the neutral line. So if there's a neutral line, that's the fourth line. So we call it the four wire system. So here we have a four wire source and a four wire load. You cannot have a four wire load with a three wire source. You need to connect them four wire to four wire. According to IEEE standard one four one. 1993 there are different uh, connections for a three phase forward system these are the different connections it's possible first for a y connected uh, three phase system so the neutral point will be the one where the neutral will be connected the neutral line so that's letter e and the other other types we have also, we, it's also possible to use a delta to make it a three-wire system. Although it's not practical and it's uh, complicated. We actually call that one, we call it the high leg system. So this is used for advanced purposes. So we will not discuss this one under this uh, course. You can discuss this one in your AC machines or higher courses. And also the other one, the T transformer and also the open delta. So we will be focusing on why three wire system, four wire system. So this will be our um, circuit, a Y to Y four wire system. So from here, we can see that there's there are four lines, and there's a fourth wire and the neutral line. Now, if the system is balanced, there's a current flowing at the neutral line. We call it I and N, the neutral current. But if the system is balanced, that one should be always equal to zero. So, in reality, if you have a balanced system, you can use a three-wire instead of a four-wire system as long as it's a balanced system. Why? Because there's no current flowing through the neutral line. But if the system is not balanced, then it's critical to use uh, a three-wire system. Why? Because if there's unbalance on the load, then there's an excess current. And if there... And that excess current will not flow through the neutral line. But if there's a neutral line, then there's a path of flow from the load to the source, going back to the source. But if the, the neutral line is not present, 
then the current will flow still along the load and that will cause a severe or critical uh, voltage change variation it can be over voltage can be under voltage and in some loading some loads voltage are very sensitive you, you cannot have over voltage you cannot have under voltage so it's safe to use a four-wire system so in household we use four-wire system because we cannot directly balance our system in the house load we don't have exactly a three-phase loads we have uh, individual phases that connected into that three-phase loads so what we did is we just only tap them per phase and in actuality in Philippine electrical code there's a code there's a standard set by IIE that we should follow that the the percent balance should be plus or minus five percent and balance if you exceed that one then it's a violation against that code so we we design system household system we balance them if it's three phase as much as possible if it's unbalanced then we need at least five percent plus or minus unbalanced so we use three wire to for safety so that there's a return path from the load to the source but in transmission lines in higher voltages transmission lines using four wire is very uh, costly because it's a four wire system you use, use four wires for lines so what they do is they only use three wire system so the application of three wire are for higher power transmission lines but in in household distribution system in lower loads then we use four wire so that's the four wire system the the analysis of a four wire system balance system is just the same as the three wire y to y system why because if there's no current flowing through the neutral line then you can just remove it and if you remove the neutral line then it's just the same as a three wire y to y delta so if you deal with it just deal with it with a three phase three wire system it's the same method it's the same thing uh, later on in unbalance there is a difference now because in unbalanced system you know that there's a current flowing through that neutral line so next topic will be how do we measure uh, power in three phase systems so we know how to measure voltage and current and we know that voltage and current affects the, vo the the power power is equal to the voltage times the current in single phase uh, dc circuit and we just add the power factor in ac circuit so how about in a three-phase system so in three-phase system before we go three-phase system how do we measure the power so here we have um a picture of electrodynamic watt meter what what is inside an electro dynamic watt meter so we use watt meter to measure power so inside the watt meter we have this is the most basic construction of a watt meter we have different parts we have the field coil and we have the moving coil and the field coil it's in series with the source while while the this is the field coil So this is the field coil and another field coil should be in series with that and and uh, along the the voltage source that, that's the voltage source is the input and that's coming from the source and another coil is connected to that source and it's in parallel we call it the moving coil the field coil produces an electromagnetic uh, force that will tend to rotate the mo moving coil in between that field coil so that rotation will be caused by the field coil and not only the field coil that will cause that rotation because in that moving coil there's another coil it's a moving coil so that moving coil is also there's a contribution with it in the rotation and that is due also to that coil and that's the voltage and the field coil will be the current so we can later on call the field coil the field current 
or the field or the current coil while the, the moving coil will be the voltage coil. In the moving coil, we have in series with a high R to prevent us from short-circuiting our source. So, uh, on the moving coil, there's uh, a pointer attached to it and it's directly on the scale. So, if there's a rotation on the moving coil due to the magnetic field, electromagnetic field produced by these coils, then that pointer also rotates respectively and it's scaled and that will be the readings for the power. So, that's the top view of the electrodynamic watt meter. So, so that's the very basic principle behind a watt meter. And this will be our equivalent circuit that we'll be using in circuit analysis. The resistor here will be omitted because we will assume that, that the resistor is inside the watt meter already. So it's part of the whole watt meter. So it's inside the watt meter. So we can omit it and directly correct, uh, connect it with the negative side of the voltage and in this course in chapter we will be discussing three different categories of methods in measuring a power in three phase the first one is the very basic three three watt meter method then we also have two watt meter method and one watt meter method so for three watt meter method so we use 3 watt meters. That's why it's called 3, three watt meter. So what we do is, we just connect 3 watt meters at each phase of the 3 phase system. So just like letter A, this is in Y connection and letter B, this is in delta connection. So there are 3 watt meters, W1, W2, and W3 connected at each phase. And try to observe the connection. Here, uh, there's a current coil and a voltage coil. So, see, look at the current coil is always in series with the path of the current. While the voltage coil is in parallel with the voltage in the phase voltage of the, the load. So, that's always true. That's always the connection. The current should be in series while the voltage should be in parallel. So that's 3 watt meter method. So if we measure the actual total power here, we just add the 3, W1 plus W2 plus W3. Simple. So example, in the figure, uh, the, the figure before, the 3 watt meter are connected to each base to the unbalanced forward Y connected load. If Z1 is 15, Z2 is 10 plus 15, Z3 is 6 minus J1. So they are connected in Y connection. With a 100 volt phase voltage and its positive sequence, determine the readings in each watt meter. So how do we determine the readings? I just use here, uh, W1 is actually the real part of the complex uh, power, S1. So it's W1 means it's the, the power at the, the single phase Z1. So if we can solve the apparent power, the complex power at Z1, then we can just directly get the the real power at that. So I came up with this one. So W1 is 666.67. And remember, this is unbalanced load because Z1, Z2, and Z3 are not equal. So for W2, you just repeat the, the process, but instead of using 15 ohms, you use Z2. Z2 is 10 plus J pipe. The voltage is still the same. Your source here is balanced, but your load is not. So it's still an unbalanced system. But your source voltages are all equal line voltages and phase voltages. So W2 will be equal to 800 watts. Then for W3, repeat again the process. But this time use Z3 instead of Z2. Then, to solve for the total power absorbed, you just add them all. So, P total now will be 2,066.67. That's simple. Now, before we discuss 2 watt meter method, there's a theorem used in polyphase circuits. We call them, they call them Blondel's theorem. Blondel's theorem states that if a circuit or system of network 
is supplied through n numbers of wires. The total power is the sum of all the readings of the watt meter used. And the number of watt meter required will be n minus 1. So n numbers of wires. So for example, in single phase, how many wires do we use in a single phase? We used 2 wires. So net 2 wires. Line 1, line 2. Line 1 or neutral or something. So how many watt meter we will be using to measure the power according to Blundell's theorem? Do we use 2? No, we used 1. Why? Because we used 2 wire, 2 minus 1, then we used 1 watt meter. So that is also true in three phase system. So in three phase system, if your system has a three bar lines, then you can at least use two watt meter in measuring the power according to Blendel's theorem. So we can use two watt meter method instead of three watt meter method. What's the advantage of two watt meter method? The advantage is you only use two. So, it's lesser number of watt meter, it's lesser cost. But, is it true? Is it also valid to use 2 watt meters in a 3 phase system? So, let us see if it's true. So, if it's true, the total power will be equal to the readings of each watt meter W1 plus W2. So, this is only applicable for uh, a 3 phase, 3 wire system, 3 wire. So, for example, if you have a Y-connected load, then the, the neutral part is not existing. So, it's a 3-wire Y-connected. So, if a 3-wire Y-connected, you cannot do 3-watt meter method because there's no neutral point. If there's no neutral point, you cannot connect them per piece. So, what's the next step? You cannot measure the power. So, another method to use is the 2-watt meter method. We can use 2-watt meter method. Why? Because it's a 3-wire system, and according to Blondels, it's still possible to use 2-watt meter. So, how do we use it? So, for unbalanced, this is the connection. See, so you, you see, we only have here 2-watt meters, W1 and W2. And the connection is still the same. Look at this W1. What's the current passing through W1? The current passing through it. Is IR and what's the voltage at W1? It's VRB. It's VRB. For W2, the current flowing it is IY. And what's the voltage at W2? It's YVYB. And also in delta, it's the same. W1, IR is flowing and the voltage is VRB and the other watt meter IY is flowing and the voltage is VYB so what's the power here the power will be equal to so if you look at this 3 phase 3 wire you don't need the neutral part so you save 1 watt meter instead of 3 so if it's not available then you can use watt meter that's the advantage of 2 watt meter method but if it's 4 wire then you can use a 3 wire system a 3, 3 watt meter method because the the neutral line is existing. So to solve for uh, the readings for the watt meter, this is the formula. You just take the, for W1, it's just IR times the magnitude of IR if this is unbalanced system. But if it's balanced later on, we will discuss the balance part. So IR, because IR is flowing through W1 and the voltage at W1 is VRB. So, it's VBR, BRB, it's the same, but in actuality, this should be VRB. The formula should be VRB because we use VRB here, not BBR. But the magnitude is the same. Then, take the cosine theta and the angle between them. Then, repeat that also with W2. What's the current flowing in W2? IY, what's the voltage? VYB. And cosine theta, and the theta again is the angle between I. Y and B, Y, B. Next. So you can also use... Uh, now, if 
you connect W1 in a different terminals. For example, this one. W1 is connected in IR. And the voltage now will be VRY. VRY. Do you see the pattern? That's the voltage across W1. It's VRY. While for W2, the current flowing it is IB. And the voltage is B, V, B, Y. Then how about the formula for this one? So it's the same formula. But the only change here is the, the power factor. Because the power factor changes. So the readings, readings also changes. So the disadvantage of a 2 watt meter method, you cannot use this one to measure the power for every piece. W1, W2 cannot represent the power at every piece. So you cannot do that. You can only measure the total power using this method. How about if I connect it to another terminal again? So there are three cases here. Uh, the common point now is R. Before, the common point are B and Y. So this time, we have the R as the common point. So if the R, R is common point, so our W1 here, the voltage will be VBR. That's right, it's VBR, not VRB. While the current is IB. And for W2, the voltage is VYR. And the current is IY. So the formula is still the same. You just change the values of the voltage and the current. The same pattern. It, de it depends on the type of the connection. Where you connect your... Uh, what meter? So for a balanced load, so what if the system is balanced? What will be the result of our W1 and W2? If it's balanced, then it means that the magnitude of the current and voltages are equal because Z at the load are also equal. So what if they are equal? So let's try to consider the setup if the connection is Y connected and we have an inductive load so if it's inductive inductive load then it's uh, it has a lagging power factor and taking VR as our reference with RYB phase sequence so these are our phase voltages with V phase V phi as the magnitude and these are our uh, line voltages, VR minus Y is VRY, and VL will be the, the magnitude also of the line voltage. VL will be equal to the square root of 3 times the phase voltage. So from that, we can solve for the IR because this is Y connected. IR will be just be equal to the phase voltage divided by the impedance at that phase. And it's equal to V phase divided by Z. And VR is V phase angle 0. Z is... Uh, Z, the magnitude of Z with the angle of theta. So if we divide that one, uh, it will be 0 minus theta. So it will be negative theta. So IL, we use IL as because it's balanced system. So the magnitude of all the line currents are the same. So we just call it IL. But the angle will be different because, because they are out of phase by 120 degrees. So the angle of IR, if our reference is VR, will be negative theta. The angle of IY will be negative 120 degrees minus theta because it's out of phase with 120 degrees. Then another one for IB, 120 degrees. So the, the, the sequence here is RYB. So those are the values of the, the phase current. The phase current is the same as the line current because it's Y connected. So if you draw the phase diagram, we can observe here that what is the angle between the current and the voltage. So we have 30 plus theta, the angle between IR and VRY. So why do we need that? Because in solving for W1, so we go back again to our original formula in the first part that the voltage times the current as the angle between them. So W1 is connected with VRY. Remember, VRY and the current flowing through it is I R. And what will be the angle between V R Y and I R? So that's why we need the angle between them, and that is 30 angle theta. 
So this one. Then we just uh, insert that angle in the formula and we know that the magnitude of BRY is VL, the magnitude of IR is IL. So we came up with the formula for I for W1 will be equal to VL, the magnitude of the line voltage times the magnitude of the line current times cosine of 30 plus theta. Where does this came from? It's the angle between VRY and IR. Why VRY and IR? Because our formula is connected, W1 is connected to VRY, voltage coil, and IR, current coil. And for W2, the voltage coil is connected to VBY, and the current is IB. So we also need to determine the angle between VBY and IB. So we go again to our pressure diagram. So where is BBY? This is BBY. This is BYB here. So if you want BBY, it's on the other way around. Then where is IB? This one is IB here. Then what's the angle between them? It's, it will be equal to 30 minus theta. And that will be 30 minus theta. So our formula for W1 will be VLIL cosine 30 plus theta. And W2 is VLIL cosine of 30 minus theta. That is for a balanced system. So if we add them, if we want to determine the actual total power now, because we know W1, we know W2 already, so we insert here to the formula because P total is W1 plus W2. So we add them, then we remember, we note that uh, there is a trigonometric identity, cos cos sin sin, if you have a cosine of uh, a two angle, double angle, u plus b. So if it's plus, then your uh, identity should be in minus. If it's minus, it's plus. So we use this one here, cosine 30 plus theta and 30 minus theta. Then we will come up with this one. So cosine 30 degrees, cosine theta degrees minus because 30 plus theta, sine 30 degrees, sine theta. That's the first. And the second one is minus, so it should be plus, cosine 30, cosine theta, plus sine 30 sine theta then we can factor out vl and il because it's just the same and this will be the result what is cosine of 30 it's square root of 3 over 2 what is sine of 30 it's 1 up what's and we insert them all then this will be our result so look at this one is it familiar p total will be equal to square root of 3 vl il cosine theta is it familiar Yes, this is actually our formula for a balanced system. The total po power for a balanced system. Before, we derived this one. And what did we do? We proved that two watt meter method can really be used to measure the total power of a three wire, three phase system. And it's correct. It's valid because if we substitute our formula, it's still the same formula. It's square root of 3 VL IL cosine theta. So, we can now conclude that we can use this formula to calculate the readings for W1 and W2. Where theta should be the load power factor angle or the angle of the impedance of the load. And... Uh, interestingly, if we try to subtract W2 minus W1, if we try to subtract it and apply again our our identity, we will come up with VL IL sine theta. Is, is this still familiar also? If we try to multiply it with the square root of 3, VL IL sine theta, and that will be our reactive power. Square root of 3 VI, VL I L sine theta. So in general, we can also solve for the total reactive power by simply subtracting the readings of the wattmeters and multiply it with the square root of three. So we measure two different parameters in this method. So it's a very advantageous method, and it is mostly used in industries and in transmission lines and distribution system because it it is less cost. And it's uh, more advantageous to use.
So, for a leading power factor, uh, the previous one is for a lagging because inductive. What happens for a leading power factor? So, here, you can see that it, W1 and W2, will the, the angle between them will just interchange. It will be, the W1 will be 30 degrees minus theta, while the W2 will be 30 degrees plus theta. But the, the formula for power is still the same. And also, Q total will also change because uh, W1 will be greater than W2. If that happens, then it's a leading power factor. So we can conclude that one here. For lagging power factor, if we divide, this is a, uh, an interesting formula. If we divide uh, the apparent, uh, the reactive power and the real power, it will be this one. We know square root of 3 W2 minus W1 all over W1 plus W2. So that's actually tangent theta if we use the power triangle. Toa opposite Q, then adjacent side will be uh, P. And the hypo hypotenuse side is S. So for lagging power factor, power factor, this is tangent theta. For a leading power factor, then it will change instead of W2 minus W1. Because now W2, W1 is greater than W2, then it's, it will be W1 minus W2. So in general, we can just make it the absolute value, the difference between them. If you want to determine the angle, what's the angle? That's the angle of the power factor, power factor angle. You just subtract. Or take the difference between the readings, you divide it with their sum, and you multiply it by square root of 3. Then you take the tangent inverse of that one, then you get the power factor angle. So if you take the cosine of that, then that will be the power factor. You can also measure the power factor using 2 watt meter method. So we can now also conclude if theta is equal to 0, so meaning they are in paste, so it's a pure resistive load. W1 will be equal to W2 if it's pure resistive load. This is balance. So you can see if W1 is W2, then this means that theta is 0 and the system is pure resistive. And if it's 60 degrees, then one of them should be equal to 0. It can be W1, it can be W2. It depends on wh whether it's lagging or whether it's leading power factor. And the total power will be just equal to the one reading because the other is 0. If W1 is greater than W2, then the load is capacitive. This is what I said before. If W1 is less than W2, then the load is inductive. And if theta is greater than 60 degrees, then you can see a negative reading from both of them. Why? Because if you go back to the formula, cosine of 30 degrees minus theta, it will, it will end up with a negative value. So if it's negative value, there's a negative to the reading. It just means that um, there's a negative reading. The theta is greater than 60 degrees. So let's take an example. In a balanced delta connected load supplied by a 240 volt line voltage, if a 2 watt meter method is implemented and if the readings are 1550 watts and 2000 watts. Now, calculate the total and per pace average power. This is a balanced system, so we can calculate for the per pace average power, unlike for the unbalanced system. So we can still use 2 watt meter method to measure the phase watt, uh, watt or power if it is a balanced system. How? You just divide it by 3 because it's balanced. The total per pace reactive power, the power factor, and the impedance per pace. So by just knowing the reading W1 and W2, you can determine different factors inside your circuit or your network. So first, letter A, the total average power, it will be the sum of W1 and W2. So P total will be equal to 3,555 watts. And for the, pers the per pace average power, just divide it by 3. The total power divided by 3. So the per pace power will be 1,185 watts. For the reactive power, it's W2 minus W1. Why W2 minus W1? Because W2 is greater than W1. So 2,000 minus 1,500 divided by square I times square root of 3. Then this will be your reactive total power. For per pace, you just divide it by 3 again, and it's equal to 
For the power factor, we use the formula tangent inverse of square root of 3w2 minus w1 all over w1 plus w2. And that one will be equal to 12.23 degrees. And if you want to solve for the power factor, you take the cosine of this one and that will be 0 0.977 lagging. Why, why lagging? Why do I put lagging here? Why do I know that it's lagging? Because... W2 is greater than W1. If W2 is greater than W1, the system is lagging. If W1 is greater than W2, the system is leading. If W1 and W2 are equal, the system is pure resistive. And for the impedance per pace, we can use the formula. The per pace impedance, uh, per pace apparent power, complex power, is just equal to per pace voltage squared. That's the magnitude, V phase magnitude. You don't need to put the angle here because V phase means magnitude, scalar quantity. Well, Z phase is, uh, is not a scalar quantity. And Z phase, we know as phase, where do we get this 1185 minus J256.92? It's P minus JQ. What P? P, the, the per phase power. We solve it before. Then Q is the per pace Q, 256.92. Why minus? Because it's lagging. If it's leading, then you put it plus. Then you will come up with Z phase will be equal to 47.5 angle 12.23 degrees ohms. So that's the per pace impedance. So we used 2 watt meter method to calculate different parameters of the circuit. Now, how about a 1 watt meter method? How do we use a 1 meter method? In using 1 watt meter method, there are different methods also under this one. First, if the neutral line is existing and if it's balanced load, then you just measure one of them, the paste, then you multiply it by 3. And that will be the total power. But if the, the neutral line is not present. It's a three-wire system. So you cannot measure the per pace load. So what we do is we create our artificial neutral point or neutral line. So this is the circuit of an artificial neutral line using uh, one watt meter method. Then what does this mean? This means that you created another load in parallel with the load. So this load now will be also balanced and there's an existing uh neutral point at that load and that will be also the same if our three phase load is in y connection they should be have having the same phase voltage so this is still valid so p total will be three times w and some also uses t methods so for t method just remove the other one other resistor directly connect it to the watt meter and the total power will be twice the reading so you can use this one and for unbalanced loading it's a different case it's more complicated to use uh, a single watt meter for so in order to use that one a single watt meter in unbalanced loading you measure it individually in the purpose connect it then remove it, connect it, then remove it. If, if there's no neutral point, then it's hard to use one watt meter method. So calculate here, there's an example for unbalanced load in three-phase system. So it's done with the power measurement. So let's now move with the last topic of this chapter. It's about unbalanced, unbalanced loading in three-phase system. So how do we deal with unbalanced loading in three-phase systems? So first, for a delta-connected load. So let's take an example to see or to investigate what happens in an unbalanced delta-connected load. Calculate the line currents and the total average power of the system in, the, in this figure later on. G1 with, with impedances Z1 equals 10, G2 15 equals 90, Z3 equals no. The system is supplied by a three-phase balanced 240 volts line voltage with RYB phase sequence. So this is the circuit. So this is the load. Now what we want is the line currents. 
So how do we solve for the line currents? First, we take VRY as our reference. And the value of the line voltages, the magnitudes are 240. So 0, negative 120, and 120 degrees because it's in RYB sequence. So how do we solve for the line currents? It's easy to solve the line currents. We just solve the phase currents first before we solve the line currents. IRR here will be equal to IRY minus IBR if we apply apply a KCL at node R. So we can first solve for IRY, IBR, IYB or the phase currents before we solve for the line currents. So these are the phase currents. IRY will be VRY divided by Z. IYB divided by Z2 instead of Z1. And IBR, BBR divided by Z3 instead of Z2 or Z1 to have IBR. Now we know the phase currents. We cannot solve for the line currents. Applying KCL at node R. So we have IRR will be equal to IRY minus IBR. And we already solved for IRY. And IBR. So IRR will be equal to this one. And also if we apply uh, KCL at node Y, we also came up with this one. And last one for the node B, we also solve for the line current IBB. Then for the total power, you just add them all. Don't use square root of 3. Square root of 3 now will not be valid in unbalanced system. So you need to solve individual phase power, you add them all and that will be the total power. Don't use square root of 3. It's not a balanced system. So, S1 plus S2 plus S3. So, how do we solve for S1? S1, by using the formula that I usually use, uh, V phase squared divided by Z. So, the, the magnitude of the V phase squared, you divide it with the, the impedance of the phase that you are solving. So for S1, the impedance Z1 is uh, 10. But what? It's 24 here. Uh, I'll check this one. It should be 10 angle 0. And for S2, it should be 15 angle 90 degrees. And for S3, it's 5 correct angle 30 degrees. There's something wrong here. It's 24. It should be 10. Then... This will be the total S. So there's a imaginary and a real part. This means that the imaginary part is Q while the real part is P. So the P total now will be 15736.61 watts. For Q, it should be... Oh, well, another way to measure P total or calculate P total is using another form, formula. Take the, the magnitude of the phase current, you square it and you multiply it with the resistance. For the first one, P1, uh, it's 10 ohms. 10 ohms because 10 angle 0. The, the real part is 10. Here in R2, R2 is 0. Why 0? Because it's 15 angle 90. So this means positive 90, it's an inductive load, pure inductive. So there's no resistance, so it's 0. And for uh, Z3, it's 5 angle 30. You just convert that one into rectangular form. And you will come up with 4.33 plus J something, the angle, uh, is 30 degrees. So there's a resistance and there's a reactance. So you, ju you just took the, the resistance and you multiply it with the square of the magnitude of the current. And also, my current here is 48. Yes, it's 48 IBR. 16... IYB and IRY is 24. And you will still come up with the same total power, 15736.61. So that's for delta connected system. So how about for a 4-wire Y-connected unbalanced load? So for a 4-wire, here, if we want to solve for the line currents, I and N now will not be equal to 0. Why? Because... This is unbalanced. So if there is an unbalance here, then there is a looping current. Then we, if we have the fourth wire, then the, the line, the neutral line will have a current flowing through it. And that is the neutral current. And it still be equal to the sum of 
the three line currents because we apply KCL at not N. So how do we solve for these line currents? First, we convert this one into a simpler circuit that you will be uh, mm, somewhat familiar with. So it's still the same circuit. We have V1, V2, and V3 and connect, connected to Z1, Z2, and Z3. And there's the line current going through the neutral point and it will go back to the neutral point of the source. So here, we can apply now our different techniques in circuits to solve for the line currents. So how do we do that? We can use the Millman's method, which came from the nodal analysis. So first, we solve for the voltage at NN, small n and capital N. So how do we do that? We use this one, VR divided by Z1 because Z, uh, Z1 is connected to VR and VY is connected to Z2. Then VB is connected to Z3. And the, the voltage connected to Zn is the neutral point, which is zero, our reference. So you need you don't need to put VBN here. And that will be ours uh, will be the unknown. And you divide it with one over last all over the the impedances that are connected at node N. And after solving for B and N, if you solve it, we can now solve for the line currents. The line currents will be IRR VR minus VN and divided by Z1. It's easy. VY minus VN and divided by Z2 and so on. For INN, it will be VN and divided by ZN. So done. So let's take an example. Calculate the line and the neutral current in forward Y connected volume. Unbalanced load is to supply if it's supplied by a balance source with 240 phase voltages and RY dissidence. Take G1 B equal to 10, Z2 3 plus J4, and Z3 8 minus J6. Assume impedance of the neutral line to be negligible. So here, there's no uh, there's no impedance at the neutral line. So how about if there's no impedance at the neutral line? We cannot solve for VNN. Why? Because VNN will be equal to 0 because it's shorted. There's the impedance there. But it doesn't mean that there's no current flowing through the neutral point, neutral line. There's still a current flowing there because it's still an unbalanced system. So we cannot use the method I discussed earlier, Milman's method. So how do we do that? So first, we take the references. Then we can directly solve for the uh, line currents. Why? Why can we directly solve them? Because the phase voltage at the source is the same voltage at the at the phase loads. Why? Because they are connected directly with the neutral point. And there is no impedance between the neutral point. So it means that they are connected in parallel directly. So the phase source voltage is directly connected to the phase load. Why? Because there's no impedance between them. So if there's an impedance between them, there's a voltage drop. So if there's a voltage drop, the phase voltage of the source is not equal to the phase voltage of the load. But in this example, there's a negligible impedance. So we can take it as they are shorted and they are connected in parallel. So we don't need to use our discussed formula or the Milman's here, but we just directly divide it with z1 because it's the voltage there is directly equal to the voltage of the source so we can solve directly for the line currents and you look at the line the neutral current it's still not equal to zero because it's an unbalanced system even though there's no impedance in the neutral line next how about a three wire by connected unbalanced load if the neutral line is not existing? So how do we deal with this one? It's not existing, so it means that the the voltage at the phase phase voltage at the source is not the same as the phase voltage at the load. How? 
so we have different methods to solve this one. I will discuss a different methods and you can choose what you want to use. You can use the mesh analysis. You can rewrite the circuit into this one. It's still three phase system. You have three phase sources here connected in three, three different phase loads Z1, Z2, and Z3 connected at point N. So from here, we can apply mesh analysis. We have a loop currents, loop A and loop B. So at loop A, we can generate this equation, Vr minus Z1 plus Z2 times Ia. Then because it's plus, we should plus, we add it with IBZ2 and minus Vy. Then you go back again to the source equals 0. At loop B, positive Vy, then the next will be Z2 plus Z3 times negative IB, then plus Ia Z2, then minus Vb. So these are the two equations. So we rearrange them, then we can apply the Kramer's rule or determinants. We can solve uh, two equations to announce. We want to solve for I a and i b loop a loop currents so if we solve for the loop currents we can solve for the line currents later on so how do we solve for i a so review your determinants where does this came from this is uh use these two formulas v y minus v r you change uh if the two one z1 plus z2 negative z2 plus z a then z2 then negative z2 plus z3 you change the first column with the constant at the right side by minus vr vb minus vy because we are solving for ia all the coefficient of ia should be replaced with the constant which is vy minus vr and vb minus vy then retain all the coefficient of ib then you divide that one with the determinant so what's the determinant it's just the the coefficients of ia and ib then you solve this one and that will be IA. So how do you solve this one? Upper is positive. Then uh, lower uh, going down is positive. Going up is negative. So VB, VY minus VR times negative Z2 plus ZT. Then VB minus VY times Z2. It's, it's positive because you interchange BY and bb then at the bottom it's still the same you just do that one and you will came up with this one you simplify further and ia will be this formula so if that is ia we can also solve for i b and i b the same process i b will be equal to this one and remember that we can now solve for the line currents so ir will be equal to i a you remember the loop the loop current is in the same direction as the line current irr but it's in opposite direction ib is in opposite direction with the line current ibb so it's negative and if you uh, you subtract them then that will be iyy the one in the middle and this will be the formulas for the three you remember them. You can memorize them if you want. Uh, it's easy to memorize. Here at the top, uh, this is in terms of uh, line voltages in instead of phase voltages. We have VRY and VBR, VYB and VBR. So you also you can also do that. Just like this one. This is in in line voltage given. You can also use nodal analysis, just like what, what we did in the first part. We solve for the voltage between the neutral points. And that will be, this will be our IRR, IYY, and IBB, VR minus VVN. And we use that formula I stated before. Then you simplify this one until you came up with this one, VRN. Then solve for IR, substitute this one in the formula. Then simplify. Then look at this one. It's still the same as the IRR as the mesh analysis. For IYY, still the same. 
and I, BB, it's still the same. So you can use them uh, both. If you want to use the mesh analysis, then use the mesh analysis. But if you want nodal analysis, then use the nodal analysis. One another method to use here, easy method, is we can also uh, convert the load into delta connection. We transform them. So, through Y delta transformation. So, originally, Z1, Z2, and Z3. We can convert them into ZA, ZB, ZC. So, how do you do that? We have a formula before. So, these are the formulas. Then, after converting that one, how do you solve for the line currents? The line currents will be what? Will be IRY, the phase current. The phase currents in the new circuit. So, this will be I, the, the line uh, phase currents in delta. These are in delta. Then, after solving for the line currents, then we can, I phase currents, then we can solve for the line currents. Just subtract them. Apply KCL. And you still came up with the same answer. IYY and IBD. And for our example, we can, I just directly use the formula I've derived. Then the answer will be this one, 18.3, angle 11.43. But be careful with using the complex number. Again, this is AC systems. So you always use complex. Be careful in using complex. Use quantities as much as possible. Distribute the negative. Then for the neutral line, it's approximately equal to zero. Why is it equal to zero? There's the neutral line. There's, this is just a three-wire system. So the current is zero because there's no flowing. Uh, the excess of that current will flow through the load itself. And it will create a voltage division. So if we want to solve for the volt phase voltages in Y connection, this will be the result. So the the voltage, phase voltage at R will be 435, VYN 139, and VBN will be 203. So what does this mean? This means that the voltages now are different. So this is very critical in uh, voltage sensitive loadings, just like what I said. If your loading is for 100 or 240 voltage source, your load is for 240 volts, then you came up with unbalanced system, then what happens? Unbalanced system that is connected in 3 wire, not in 4 wire. So what happens is this one, 435, 139, and 303. So some are over voltage, two are over voltage, and one is under voltage. So this is very critical. So we need to include the third wire or we need to balance our system as much as possible. So in general, we use three wire system for uh, unbalanced loading. And we don't use three, three wire system. We only use four wires for unbalanced loading for household purposes. But if you have a three phase motors, all three phase motors, then you can use three wire because they are always balanced. Three phase motors are always balanced system. But if you connect some single phase to your three phase source, then it will create some unbalance. And you can still have some unbalance, but make sure that you limit it to plus or minus 5%. Or, or you size up your neutral line, uh, thicker neutral line, so that it can accommodate higher value for the neutral current. So if you have a neutral, uh, a neutral line that is uh, more thicker than the, the normal lines, then it's better. But for uh, in actual practical purposes, you don't do that one. We always put the neutral line to be the lesser, less, uh, the thinnest of them all uh, wires. It always uh, two step lower than the neutral, uh, the, the normal lines in a three phase system in design. That's that's true because we always balance our system. But if you're lazy to balance your system, then you can just use a thicker wire. There's no problem with that.
So that is unbalanced system. So we already done with chapter 3. So these are some problem sets for you to solve. Do tutorial problem number 19.1, 19.2, 19.3 of the Tereha book chapter 19. To be passed through Edmodo Income Scanner in PDF format. You don't need to solve them all but solve as much as you can. The more you solve, the higher your points is. And this will not be your exam. It's just a problem that is uh, plus points to your total uh, points later on. Or it can be also put to your attendance. Points for your attendance. So you do them until maybe next week. You don't need to solve them all. You just solve as much as you can. Okay? Okay, see you. Chapter 4.